Today we are going to talk about blur filters. Hello my friends and let's get started. So we are going to look at the filters up here. There is the blur section and I will explain to you all of these filters in the first section. The first one is called average and for this we will use a different picture, this one. You can see it's a model shoot and there is some color cast in the picture. The white balance is not there yet. Uh, there is some color in the white colors. The skin looks kind of bluish from the ambient light. So this all is not good. So I will just duplicate that layer and then we will go up to filters and create an average. And what this does is create an average of all the colors in the picture. So you basically have an average of those. Yeah. So now you go over to where it says layer up here and invert it. So you have the inverted color of the average and then you just set it to soft light. There you go. And this will give you a white balance or remove the color cast, which is basically the same thing. So you can see here if I hide the layer, now the picture has the color cast, doesn't look too good. Now I show the layer and you can see the skin looks fresh, the white colors look white, everything is nice in the picture. Of course, it isn't sharpened yet, the contrast isn't there yet, all these kind of things. I'm just talking about uh, removing the color cast. Okay, this is one way to use this filter, the average blur. Let's hide these two layers, go back to this picture here and we will go to the next filter which is called the Gaussian blur and you will probably use this one the most. What it does is it has just one fader and it gives you a very smooth kind of blur. Very, very nice blur. And basically what it is, it looks like as if you look through a opaque glass or through an opaque window. So it's a very, like, like I said, a very smooth kind of um, blur. The thing that you don't get from this is the usual effects that you get from a lens blur because inside the lens of your camera you have different kinds of lenses stacked on top of each other and then at the end uh, you have an opening and the opening is get uh, where the light is getting through is getting bigger or smaller by having different blades and these different blades show in the blur of the picture. We'll see that in a second. So this was the Gaussian blur, which is very smooth and very, very easy to use. The next one is, wait, I have to select the layer. It's very important. The next one is the diffuse glow, which is kind of a very strange filter. They could have done it better. So if someone from the affinity company is listening, some things should be done better. You can see if there is a light source in your picture, this will create a blur that looks like a glow, a diffuse glow in your picture. So you can have the radius of the blur as you can see with the finer details. Wait, I will zoom in a little bit so you see it better. Well, not too much maybe. Like this from the different, um, from the tree. There we go. Let's go back to our diffuse glow. And you can see with the radius, it's getting um, smoother the more I go up to 100 pixel. Then, of course, I can set the intensity of it and I can set the th threshold, which is basically where is the edge of what is considered light and what is considered not light, basically. So where's the light source? You see, so this is kind of getting outside, it's getting bigger, the smaller the threshold is. And opacity, of course, is opacity, how visible this is. So you can set up a super glow where you don't see anything anymore or just a little bit of it. Um, the problem I have with this is kind of not that great implemented. It's, I understand the idea, but it could be better. And the one thing I really critique about this is you cannot set the color of the glow. The glow is always white. And it's a problem because not every light source is white. So why is the glow always white? And I thought you can set it up here with the brush color, but you can't. It's always a white glow. So that makes it not that useful in my kind of, from my kind of perspective. But still, you can see how it's used and often you can introduce like a 
glow to the picture if you need a white glow. So this is how you use that. Let's go to the next one. The next blur here is a box blur. The box blur is historically a blur that's kind of pretty quick and doesn't use a lot of CPU power. And what it does is it makes a, how can I say, it averages the color of the pixel to the pixels next to it in a box shape. And the result of that is that you end up with a blur that gets these little lines, as you can see here. You see, there is some little boxy kind of things in your picture, it doesn't look very nice. I'm not sure why you would use it, um, but if you want this kind of boxy effect, you can do it's in the software. Um, the next one is a lot more useful to you because this one is, or the next three ones are more useful to you. This one is the motion blur, which is very nice because this simulates your camera under motion when you are shooting from, for example, out of a car or when you're jumping down uh, from something. So you can introduce something that's moving and you can down here set with the rotation the angle that this movement is going in. You can see here when you follow the lines, they are always following the degree that you're setting up here. And this can be very useful, especially when you are doing some kind of special effect work. For example, a car is rushing by and you, you have a picture of a car that's standing and you want to make a composition where this car is driving. Of course, the car is going to be blurry in the as the complete car or as just some parts of the car so you can do it with this and you can set the direction that the motion is going in so this is very useful for a lot of different effects um, that you want to apply to your picture the next one is the radial blur which is basically the same thing but the difference is now we are spinning around as you can see um, there is a little bit of a problem with this one um, because I would like to have more influence on what radial means because I can't do a I can't do an ellipse you know it's always round so this is a little bit of a problem if you want to have some rotation effect but it should be in perspective so um, but it's still a nice effect if you want to have something that's spinning you can see it works very nice and when you click on the background you can set the center point of where the rotation should happen or what is the axis of the rotation so this is very nice and of course with your slider you can set um, the amount of rotation or of rotational blur which can go to a very abstract area and you can see this can be used for example for a very cool and nice backgrounds if you need some abstract backgrounds for a flyer for your desktop for your design this can be a very nice source for that you see you can get really spacey kind of effects with that okay let's look at the next blur and this is a zoom blur also kind of an effect thing where basically it looks like you are rushing into the scene or something is jumping at you. This can also be used in compositions where objects are moving or you, where you want to have the impression of something moving. And again, you can set where the center is by just clicking on the background before you apply the effect. By the way, I am explaining these effects from the filter menu up here and these are permanent but you also have live effects down here that you can apply to your layer. You can see there's a lot of different of these blurs and those are live so you can edit them after you applied them to the picture so maybe decide which one is the best choice for you but you can also see not all of the choices that I have up here are accessible down here. So we will talk about these blur filters in another video. Okay let's go on to the next blur um, and this is a very nice one it's a lens blur and the interesting thing about this is what we talked about before. So let's first set the radius and of course the radius always is how blurry the picture is going to be but down here 
you can set the number of blades that's inside of your camera and the curvature of the blades because there are different build models of camera and some of course have a curved blade and others have just a straight blade and this has an effect on how the blur is looking you see um it's kind of hard to see let's maybe zoom in again a little bit um like this okay let's apply it again there we go lens blur make it blurry not too much and then reduce the number of the blades and you can see when you go to three blades you see that you it, it has some lines here that look like a triangle you know so uh, this is the effect that you get from a lens when you have a blur um in the back of your picture you get you see these effects often you also see them when you have a bouquet in your picture that the bouquet has the shape of the blades of your camera so this can be very important for simulating different kinds of cameras or different kinds of sharpness and of course this is an effect this is a kind of thing that you cannot have with the gaussian blur because the gaussian blur is very uh, smooth and very equal all over the picture there is no differentiation with the blade and you can see here this really has an effect on the look of the picture it works better on other pictures not this particularly but you can see what the difference is another thing that you can have here is also the bloom in the picture which is kind of where the picture is starting to get blown out and there you can now also pretty good see these kind of triangles that you get when you go to three plates and when i go to a higher number of plates this is changing so this is also telling you how this is working and by the way here you can set the bloom color so this is pretty nice you can adjust this a little bit and by the way let me see for a second if this has any relation to the colors that i set up here so now it's green uh let's go this one second radius whoa way too much way too much set the threshold higher no it's still red okay there we go so this is simulating how a camera would handle light and blur in the picture based on the build of the camera so this is a very nice um, filter let's go back to the full picture size and we will look at the next filter which is depth of field blur we have looked at this yesterday a little bit with the tilt shift and basically this filter has um two areas that are interesting or important to you one are these blue dots here and when i set up um, the radius of the blur which is the intensity of the blur basically the radius um, you can see here that we have blur and at this line you have the maximum blur that you set up here and here the blur basically ends so when i move this point in the blur is getting in f uh, reaches further into the center of this selection and it's getting smoother like a gradient so i can move this outside and you can see that now um, the blur is spreading over a longer distance and still everything that's outside of this line is the maximum blur amount and now you have an ellipse which i also would like to see for the radial blur and you can also of course influence it here um, again with the size but here also with the shape when you pull this out you can get it back to a circle uh, when you zoom out a little bit one second you can set it back to be in a circle shape you know so this is pretty easy to handle there we go and of course we not only have this kind of round setting here we also have the tilt shift which is in a straight line and there it works the same way outside of these lines you have the maximum blur amount inside of these there is no blur at all and you can just set it up and here we have the specialty that when we move these points around it rotates 
also the blur or the line of the blur and you can stop this or fixate it if you just hold the shift key and then move the point then it will not rotate it will just move inside or outside depending on where you're moving it and you can do this for both sides independently which is also very nice um, so this is done very good although there is something missing here because here down here you can see you can set the vibrance of the color and you can set the clarity of the picture what you cannot set is the brightness of the blur area outside where it's blurred the most and this would be very very important especially for an effect that's going to be a tilt shift because it would be it would be a lot nicer if you can make the outside a little bit darker or the inside a little bit brighter so the effect is intensified so this is something i'm missing with this filter here okay let's go to the next one and we are almost through so this one is the field blur and that's a very strange one i have to say so you have these points here and you can make as many points as you want and i would suggest that you use at least two points because otherwise it's not really working and the idea behind this is uh wait so let's set one at the tree and then I click here to make another one and I click here to make another one. And now I can set the global radius of the blur so that the picture is getting blurry. There we go. And then I can click on the individual points and you have here selected handle level and selected handle power. And when you move these, you can see what they do. So the level is the intensity of the blur that it's happening at this kind of point. So you can see the lower I set it, the less um, global uh, blur is applied to this kind of area. And the handle power means um, the radius. How big is this? And strangely enough, the bigger I set it, the smaller it gets. So mm, it's kind of the opposite of what it kind of says. But you can see that you can really create a point where you have some sharpness here you can even move it around and then you have these other points where you can have some blur so you can really have how can i say a blur that is happening in several areas of the picture while other areas stay sharp and this can be very useful to direct the eye and have several points of blur and several points of sharpness in the picture um, which is especially useful if you're creating a picture where you have some things that are closer to the camera and other things that are more or should be more in focus and you, you want to influence that in that way. With this, you can do that by just setting uh, these kind of points and adjusting the settings here. And of course, you can do as many points as you want. I can click over here and make another point and just reduce the level. And then suddenly I have more sharpness down here and can even adjust the size. It doesn't make too much sense now with this picture, but you get the idea of what you can do with it. It has a lot of creative potential, so it's actually pretty nice. Okay, this was a pretty long video because it was a lot of different filters. I hope this helped you a little bit to see how to use these filters and what they actually do. I will talk about other filters in another video. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, subscribe. I do a new video every three days. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon, where I offer a lot of additional benefits like my original files with all the layers. I give you feedback on your pictures and you can also live chat with me. Okay, see you in the next video and have a nice day. Bye.